this question we are given a function f of x f of x equals 1 over x plus 1 that is a rational function and we are asked which one of the following graphs is the inverse of that function so let's do a little process of elimination first of all um, inverse functions have this relationship that they look similarly shaped and the inverse function looks like the graph of f of x reflected across the y equals x x uh, y equals x line the identity function because all with inverse functions um, all the x's and y's or you could say the domain and range switches places from what it was on f of x so the domain the domain of f is equal to the range of f inverse. In other words, all the x values uh, on f become y values on f inverse. And also the range, all the y values of f become x values on the inverse function. Okay, so knowing that, that's why the graph of the inverse function will look like the original function of f but it'll be reflected across this dividing line here, like a mirror image. So one thing you can do is try to imagine or draw out what this looks like, and then imagine what it would look like um, reflected across that line, and that might help you quickly identify the answer. Uh, I also happen to know that this given f of x is uh, a transformation of the parent function, the reciprocal function. So remember the reciprocal function, f of x equals one over x, and that on the xy plane looks like this, where it has a vertical asymptote on the y-axis and a vers uh, horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. And if you were to just shift that up one unit, then you would have this function because remember when you add a value onto the outside of a function it shifts it up or if you subtract it shifts it down. You can also add something to x and move it to the left or subtract something from x and move it to the right so we could use transformations to try to determine uh, to determine what the original function would look like and then reflect it across the y equals x line. So those are all skills that we could employ here. But um, I'm going to show you another way of doing this, especially since this is multiple choice. And this will have us zero in on the principle of how each ordered pair on the function of f is going to be the, recip the um, reversed coordinates on the f inverse function. So for instance, I can take make a table for my f function. Okay, and let's just say I start plugging in values for x. So let's pick um, something like um, 1. If I plug in 1 for x into this function here, I'll have 1 over 1 plus 1, which equals 2. So when x equals 1, I get a y value or a function value of 2. Now, thinking about the inverse function, f inverse of x, If I just swap the x and the y, I'll have a point on the inverse function. And let's do maybe a couple more. Let's put in, we can't put in 0 because we'll get 1 over 0, which is undefined. Um, let's try negative 1. Just keep the numbers simple and small here. And then I would have negative 1 over 1, or 1 over negative 1, however you want to say that. That's how it's written like this. And that would give me negative 1 plus 1, which gives me 0. Okay, so I would have the coordinates 1, 0. Now if I switch those, I would have 0, negative 1. Okay, so maybe 2 points is good enough because it might help us um, eliminate another answer here. Oh, by the way, I didn't say that I would eliminate this because it doesn't have... Um, asymptotic behavior and because we know that lines or at least we should know by now probably that um, linear functions this is a line so it's a linear function would be in the form 
f of x equals mx plus b. And so the if if your original function isn't aligned, then your inverse function also is not going to be aligned. Okay, so this this option's gone, and we're down to only two choices here. Okay, we have these two that look like reciprocal functions. 1 over x plus 1. We have 1 comma 2 and negative 1 comma 0. Then x and f of inverse of x give you 2 and 1, 0 and negative 1. So let's see if we can find the point 2 comma 1 on either of these graphs. So 2 comma 1. I'm going to go to two, on the first graph here, 2 comma 1. Nope, it doesn't fall on this graph. What about 0 comma negative 1? So 0 for x, negative 1 for y. Nope, that doesn't fall on the graph of this function either. So this must not be the answer, which leaves option B as our most has to be the answer. Um, but let's just double check. Let's verify that we have two points. These two points are going to fall on this graph. So 2 comma 1 is right here. And you can see it does fall on the graph. And then we have 0 comma negative 1. Okay, so with multiple choice, that made it a lot easier for me to tell which one was the answer. Um, it can also help to look at the graph, even though you're not using a graphing calculator, so you won't be able to just graph the functions and make it a choice. But let's just take a look at the function 1 over x. This would be the reciprocal function. And if we shifted it up one unit by adding 1 to the outside, then we would have this graph. And that is the graph that we were given, f of x. Now here is the y equals x identity line. And if we reflect across that line, we will have our reciprocal function. So we had, um, let's look at some of these pairs on here. We had 1 comma 2 and negative 1 comma 0. So notice that those both fell on my graph of f of x. And if I do the reverse of those, then I will have uh, 1 comma 2. Oops, I meant to say I was supposed to switch those, 2 comma 1. if I can type. There we go. And um, switch negative 1 and 0. So I have 0 comma negative 1. Okay, so now we have these two points that would be on the inverse function. Let's make the inverse red. Okay, and now I'm going to review also how you can graph, uh, you know, create the equation of a reciprocal function so that I can graph it and show it to you. Okay, so we're going to add in a new page here. We're going to take the function f of x equals 1 over x plus 1, and we're going to go through the process of finding the inverse function. So step one is to take the original function and write it with y instead of the f of x notation. Then you're going to switch the x's and y's. So I'm literally just writing the x over here and the y here. And then solve for y. So now I'm going to solve for y. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides first to get rid of this. So then I have x minus 1 equals 1 over y. And then I'm going to multiply 
both sides by y, or you could look at this as a fraction, and since we have two fractions, one fraction equals another fraction, this is a proportion which we could solve with cross multiplying. So I'm going to cross multiply so that I get from here, I get 1, and then from here, I get y times the quantity x minus 1. And now I want to get y by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by x minus 1 quantity. And that becomes a 1. And so finally we have the simplified version of this, y equals 1 over x minus 1. Okay, so then I replace that with the inverse function notation, replace the y. And now I have my inverse function. So let's graph that. 1 over x minus 1. 1 over quantity x minus 1. So let's call this one g of x. 1 over x minus 1 quantity. And then we'll go ahead and make that red. Okay, so now you can see how there's symmetry across this identity function line. And um, to be able to identify that more clearly, having a couple points on there, especially with a multiple choice, um, makes it easier to quickly see which graph would be the, mo the one that makes sense there.